Well, hello, and welcome to my rather cold workshop. It's late autumn here in the UK. Uh, winter is fast approaching, and the temperature in here is a little above freezing, but I don't think it's very far above freezing at the moment. Uh, as a result, I'm into the highly fashionable insulated padded overalls and, uh, and gloves. I've been looking on, uh, online for a child's clock, that, uh, the wall clock for, for a two-year-old's bedroom, and I didn't really find anything I, I really liked. What I did find, however, was some good ideas, just not quite in the form I wanted. So here's one of them. This is a matte black minimalist uh, clock, clearly not a child's clock. However, it's got these photo frames around the edge and, and a, a clock in the centre. And this idea is right. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and make a new back for this. I'll take all this apart paint it in some nice bright colours and try and get some uh, actual numbers, actual figures, to go around the clock so it's got actual uh, time numbers from 1 to 12. And with a bit of luck this will turn into something that's much more suitable for uh, a child's bedroom. Okay, so it appears the screws are just they're just self-tapping screws that are just screwed into the uh, the plastic surround. That's that's good because it means I can, if necessary, I can get some longer screws or shorter screws as necessary, and they'll just tap straight in. So I've got basically three units: twelve, three, six, and nine. I might see if these will offset more. There appears to be another set of holes in there. I'll have a look at that and maybe we can make a, a bit more of a curve. These have to go on the piece of wood now so, so that they overlap the edge like that. To work out how I'm going to do that, drill these holes and, and screw that in from the back. And then, as I say, these ones at the side, I need to. So I don't have to offset those. I could. I might leave those just, just flat. I quite like the idea of it being sort of multi-dimensional, having the different heights. But it would be a lot simpler just to make it all at one level. I'll have a think about that and see what I want to do. Uh, that looks like it will just. It's just a knot holding the actual clock into that piece, so that should come apart quite easily too. Okay, I've moved the camera because I thought you might like to see the view from my side of this workbench for a change. So I've marked the, the centre of each edge of this board and then drawn the centre lines, and I've now marked uh, the width of each of these. These are 194 millimetres a piece. So 97 millimetres either side of that line. As you can see, I did it wrong the first time. So I've got to do that for all four edges. And then I can work out how far these units go over the edge. Mark that. Because of the way it came apart, the top and bottom ones have got these exposed uh, screw holes in the corners, whereas the the ones at the side don't. So I think I'm going to have to screw this together from the front rather than the back. And these ones that don't have a hole at the front, I can easily drill that through. So I think there's a plan forming here. It's a long way to go. I'm going to get on with marking this out.
what I really should do is mark the top of this. At the moment it's a regular size, but I should mark which is the top and then I know. And that'll keep all my measurements consistent to each other. So now this goes, the original size of the of the clock as it came out of the box would put that flush with the edge of, uh, of the wood there. I want to go out more like that, I think. I don't think they need to be so deep that I need to drill them first. That's the right idea. Having proved that, I think I can take all of these now apart and paint these frames. So that's the next job. I'm going to clear up all of these screws and things and strip this down further. Right, that's it. It's all uh, stripped to its component parts now. I've taken out all those little example photographs that they supply with the frame and the glass and the backs in fact the, the backs just on clip so obviously that's all the parts I've rubbed all these down now with uh, a bit of wet and dry 240 grit just to key the paint a bit so that hopefully the, the new paint will stick better I'm going to give these a wipe down with some uh, white spirit some thinners just to pick up any any dust off there. I've also stripped out the clock module. The uh, just standard clock module. The hands just basically pull off, and then the, there's a nut, and the module comes out the back. So all of that can can be painted. I'm going to put some uh, old newspaper down and give the whole lot a coat of primer. Okay, I'm done for today. That's all the parts painted in their various colours. I think they're looking okay. They've covered reasonably well. I've learned a lot about airbrushing along the way. I'll come back out tomorrow and try and finish the, uh, the wooden back so I can reassemble this. Now this is the point at which I kind of wish I had a bandsaw in this workshop, but I don't have a bandsaw and I don't have anywhere to put a bandsaw, so I'm going to have to cut these. I was thinking jigsaw, but actually I might just, for that mount, I might just cut them by hand and, and then sand them to shape on the belt sander. That would probably work. Let's give that a try. Okay, that's, uh, that's an improvement, I think. I'll probably go around these edges a little more later, but that's a good start. Okay, next I need to 
work out how the clock is going to mount in the centre there. And how this whole thing is going to hang on a wall eventually as well. So the first thing then is to put this back together with the clock and the hands so I can see what's needed. It already has a little hanging uh, hole in the back there, but it's recessed. You can see that the, the clock module sticks out beyond the back of this piece. Two inches from that face. So if I can draw a line that goes through where the screw needs to be and measure that distance, what is that? One and nine sixteenths of an inch. Okay, I can do one and nine sixteenths. While I'm here with this all, I'm going to mark the centre as well. That'll be covered up when I put the clock on, but when I sand this and remove all these pencil marks, I'll still have a reference. I'm also going to mark the edges. And then if I need the reference later, that'll still be something I can work to. Don't want to come right through the back. Yeah, that'll do. Once it's hung on a wall, that will be that will be fine, I think. So what I'm thinking is, if I make a recess in there with a force limit, and then screw that on over the recess, that will provide a way of hanging it on a hook without having anything too significant sticking out the back. I need to go carefully here because obviously I don't want to go right through, I just need to make a, a recess in, in the maybe halfway through, something like that. I find it's often easiest to just thread the screw in and tap the hole before trying to actually fit it for real. Not too bad in this case because everything stays still anyway, but if you're working vertically or on something that's upside down, it's not so easy. Okay, well, that's not how a mirror hanger is supposed to be used, but I think that will, hoping you can see on the camera, but that will attach to a hook, or in this case a screw, and act as a hanging point. Okay, so. I've now marked out all of these holes. I don't know whether you can see them from there, but all the way around the edge. I've given this uh, a good sanding, 120 grit and then 240, all the way around. Got rid of all the pencil marks and cleaned it up generally. I've also cleaned up all of the dust that was uh, from the sanding and off myself and the bench and everywhere else. And I've wiped it over with white spirit just to get rid of any remaining dust greasy finger marks and so on. 
Uh, I'm going to try and stain this. I've got this Georgian medium oak. It's actually the same colour I'd used for this bench top. There's very little left, so I'm hoping there's enough to do the job. A couple of weeks have passed since I was last out here, and, uh, getting on with things. A few things have happened in the meantime. The first thing is the numbers for this clock have finally arrived, and I've got these painted. Um, didn't bother filming it, because it's just painting, but uh, painted all of those in the colour and I also darkened all the edges of them. I cheated with those as well. Um, rather than risk spraying them and getting black paint onto this coloured front, I, uh, I actually coloured the edges of them with ink from a permanent marker which has worked really well. So I've screwed that in there and that is the right depth now to screw through from the back of the, the wood. I think it is anyway, yeah. So that gives me the measurement there, the, the bit that's sticking up, which you may not be able to see on the camera, but the little bit that's sticking up is probably about three millimetres. So I need to cut or grind that back on uh, two, four, six, eight screws so that they don't show all the way through. Right, let's see if that will go together. Because these three parts have to go together. How does that go? That way, ah, that way around, like that. Of course, that's the wrong size screwdriver. Okay, so I've got all the frames back in, got all the, the, the glass and the backs in. I was just starting to put this together. I've put the screws in from the, from the back. I was just starting to put it together and I realised that I need to put the... Uh, sorry, I, I need to mark out, I need to put the template on for the numbers before I do that because the the reference marks I made when I was making this for 12, 3, 6 and 9 will be covered up by the frames, so I need to attach this first. So if I line up that pin with the two marks which probably don't show up on camera but I can see them from here, there's one there and one there, and then I align 12 and 6 on this cardboard with all of that. Yeah, I think that should work. So that's the basic uh, basic layout. Next thing is to get the numbers on there. So I've laid out the numbers there. Uh, they're not attached yet, just to get the uh, the right idea. Numbers are tricky things to arrange in a circle because the centre of the centre line of a number is is different on every number, and the centre of the number is different, particularly for numbers like twelve, for example, where the centre of the number is actually somewhere just into the two, rather than between the one and the two. It's very difficult sometimes to get things aligned correctly. Also, the mathematically correct position may not actually be the one that looks correct. 
and I've seen even uh, professionally produced uh, clock faces and instrument faces that have the numbers uh, incorrectly spaced. Horrible messy glue this. It's good glue, but it's messy. I don't know how to avoid that that messiness. It does however have the advantage of allowing a bit of repositioning once I put these on here. Mm. Now that has leaked excess. Really don't want that. But on the other hand I don't want to wipe it with this paper and make a bigger mess. Well, at least this glue does dry clear once it's done, so let's see. Right, the glue has gone off enough for me to be able to handle this at least. So it's time to get this last bit done and uh, finally complete this little project. It's all taken a lot longer than, uh, than I'd hoped. There we go. I think, in hindsight, come in the middle of the picture, in hindsight I think I've probably made this wooden backboard a little bit too big. I probably should have cut the, the corners, radius them more down there. It just looks a little bit heavy, but uh, yeah, by and large that's, that's okay. That's what I set out to make. A clock to hang on the wall. Um, in a child's room. I should say, uh, the way this is made, it's probably not suitable for handling by a small child. It's got a few sharp edges on the uh, where the frames are pressed and the paints I've used are not particularly child friendly I suspect. But this is a wall clock, it's designed to go up on the wall and, and be looked at rather than handled so I think that's probably okay. Once again, thank you for watching the video all the way to the end. I'll put a link in the video description to the original clock that I, I bought, that I started out with here, just in case you want to make one of these yourself. It's just about the end of 2020 as I sit here. I, I suspect this video won't make it up onto the site until 2021 now. So, uh, Happy New Year I guess. Bye!